My goodness, it is so worth it. Your sleep quality will improve so much when you know that you are safe. Welcome back to the second video about the EcoFlow Delta line. This is the EcoFlow Delta Max 2000 system. I actually had different plans for this video. I wanted to show you the top five use cases for a power station like this, but I came up with something way more interesting or rather way more useful. As I said in the last video, I want to be able to withstand a real blackout. And in the last two or three months, I learned quite a lot about this topic. And with that, I also learned a lot about the system. So in this video, I will tell you all my learnings, all my knowledge that I gathered so far, everything that I like, everything that I don't like, aka possible improvements. And at the end of this video, I will also get to a Q&A section and answer all the comments on the last video, as I promised. By the way, if you're interested already, then check out the links in the description. I will listen link the best deals for you, so check it out. Yeah, now let's get to my learnings. If you're interested in the unboxing, in my first impressions, in the specs, in the features, a close overview, all of that good stuff, then check out the first video. Click on the card right here. I will listen, link it right here, also in the description, of course. Check it out if you want to see all the tests, all the demos, charging it with solar, because I won't cover any of that in this video. So let's get to my first learning. So first of all, I need to tell you about where you can save money and where you should definitely not save money. You can save money when you buy solar components, when you buy the solar panels and all of that stuff. Cables, all these components, you don't need to go super high end when it gets to that because it is not really a health hazard. It's outside, you know, it's not inside of your house. Moreover, there is not much that can go wrong. No need to worry about that. So there is no need for super high, for super expensive panels. But where you should go high end is the battery or rather the power station of course. Usually this is kept indoors and cheap power stations are not only less efficient, they can also be a serious, serious health hazard, a major risk. Just imagine if one of these catches on fire, it's game over. So I would not go cheap when it gets to the actual battery to the power station, a very important aspect of this topic if you ask me. And now let's move on to the solar panels. So how many panels are enough or rather how much wattage do you actually need? So in my case, first of all, I had a 375 watt solar panel inside my balcony lodge, inside this area. And this only produced around 0.4 kilowatt hours per day on a sunny day, that is, which is, of course, way too less. So if you're also in a really bad situation like me, one panel is definitely not enough. If you have a garden, like an outdoor space, this might do, but I would still suggest to aim for around 800 watts of power. So this big panel on its own inside my balcony is pretty much useless. So I thought a lot about how I could add more. And then I found these rather light ones, these portable ones. And just last week I completed this build, actually like four days ago. All in all, this is another 400 watts, but this time it's on the outside of my balcony. So this is way better, a way better placement, of course. And I hope that this will produce around one kilowatt hour per day, maybe more, at least I hope so. But you know, my placement is just super bad. And all in all, I get like two to four hours of sunlight tops in this area. It's really bad. And also at this point, I hope that I won't get any complaints from my neighbors. But yeah, so far so good. When I worked on this, it took me around five hours to string everything together. I only got positive feedback from like seven guys that I met. So that's good, but you never know. I don't want to jinx it. But anyways, the more panels, the better it is, of course. So I would aim for the max input of the power station. Definitely, definitely. By the way, the big heavy one, the big heavy panel is around 50 euros per 100 watts of power. And these smaller portable ones, they are more expensive. They are twice that. It's like 100 euros for 100 watts. So my most shocking lesson, oh my goodness. My most shocking lesson while using this system was the internal power consumption of the main unit. Just turning on the inverter will drain the battery. Any component that you turn on will actually drain the battery even while just idling. So there is a reason why there are so many different sections that you can turn on and off separately and also why there is a auto off functionality. As far as I can tell, 
The inverter in this one for the AC outlet will consume around 20 to 30 watts when it's idling, which is as much power as my fridge uses. You know, when you spread it out over time, my fridge will also use exactly 30 watts. The fridge is of course on and off and on and off and on and off, but the mean is 30 watts of power consumption. So my naive calculation at first was, well, you have four kilowatt hours of capacity and the fridge will use 30 watts of power. So 4,000 watts divided by 30 watts is like 133 hours or around 5.5 days. But I didn't know that the inverter will also consume this pretty much this amount of power is a coincidence. So in my case, this will cut the operation time of my fridge exactly in half. So my fridge won't last 5.5 days with this system, it will only last 2.7 days. And this was so shocking to me. Well, granted, I was naive and stupid or rather clueless. I don't want to be too hard on myself, but this is a very, very important lesson. Do not forget about the actual internal power consumption of a power station. Now, this is actually perfectly normal, especially for a really powerful power station or rather for a powerful inverter. Inside here is a huge inverter that allows a constant power draw of up to 2400 watts. So of course the coils inside are big and the bigger the coils, the bigger the, the heat, the bigger the power, internal power consumption. Well, the bigger the coils, the more loss of energy you can expect. And as I said, this is perfectly normal. Also, this is a red, this is a good inverter in here, but still these things will always have internal losses. So you can never calculate with the, the whole capacity that that's not possible, especially if you have devices that only require a low wattage. For example, if you have a very efficient fridge, then the internal losses the inverter might use up more power than the fridge itself. And that's not good when the power station actually uses more power than the actual item that you want to power. <laughs> so yeah, quite crazy, right? But you just need to deal with it. And if you don't know how, I will tell you in the next section. So when should you actually use a power station? I learned this the hard way because first of all, I wanted to go all nutty <laughs> all obsessive and use it literally all the time charge it up with the solar panel over day use it overnight to power the fridge i had the fridge hooked up to this all the time but the charge level just kept on dropping day by day and i was like what's going on so yeah now i know and now let me tell you all about the problems that i encountered with my setup and my you know my experiments so as i said in my case Powering my fridge only has a 50% efficiency because the inverter in here uses as much power as my fridge. Please watch the previous segment if you're confused. And another annoying, very annoying thing is the loud fan or the, the loud fans. There are four fans inside the main unit. And I have this unit, I have, the, I have both of them stacked on top of each other, literally right next to my bed where my feet are. And this fan only knows zero and one off and on full power or zero and there are no fan curves there is no adjustability when it gets to the actual cooling of the main unit and every time when these fans power up they wake me up and this is around once per hour which is yeah as i said this is very annoying so yeah that definitely sucks for me but maybe just for me maybe you're different maybe you don't care about that so let me get to the actual worst problem using this all the time even if you actually don't need it, will of course degrade the system over time. And even though this will of course take a few years, this degradation, this degra degradation, this degradation will cost you so much more money than just paying for the electricity it is not even funny. So in my case, except for rare occasions like camping and activities like that, I just have it to be safe in case of an actual blackout. I keep my batteries stored at around 50% charge level. And in case that something will happen, then I will just hook up my solar panels to the main unit and then hook up my fridge to the main unit too. With almost 800 watts of power, this should be good for my fridge. But right now, all my panels are connected to the grid. Yeah, so in an emergency, I of course need to unhook it from the grid and connect it to my power station. So is it actually worth it? And I thought about this a lot because this is not cheap. Batteries as of now are still fairly expensive, but if you can afford it, 
and also if you're paranoid as me my goodness it is so worth it and mind you i'm not that paranoid i'm more like realistic and as crazy as it sounds in middle europe a blackout is a possible scenario it is a real possibility because you know our leaders and managers are out of their mind they don't know whatever in any case i want to be prepared so even if this is the only use case blackout prevention it is so worth it and of course this is not the only use case for a power station like this so there is that too uh, but i think you get the point if you have the money it is definitely worth it your sleep quality will improve so much when you know that you are safe at least it did for me so I've been testing a few power stations lately and I have to say that EcoFlow has the best features and the most features, especially when it gets to the app. Second to none, it is crazy. The gap to the competitors is actually huge. But there are essentially two things that I think could need improvements, two possible improvements. First of all, this is near and dear to my heart, fan curves. Please let us control the fans over the app. For example, let them run at 10% for example all the time or you know create actual curves instead of full power and off. This would be so huge for all the guys who actually sleep right next to this power station. I think it should be possible so fan control oh my goodness this would make this system even better. And secondly we also need a proper API for automation purposes. This has Wi-Fi and it also has, you know, an NIP address. So a proper API for managing automations would be another amazing improvement. Maybe this is already in the works, but yeah, these two things would make it even better. These are two things that are missing in my eyes, fan curves or fan control and a proper API to automate this thing even more. The app is amazing already, but well, with a proper API and automation, you limitless possibilities so here we go let me read a few comments from the last video what got me interested in the delta max is the possibility of acquiring two extra batteries and connecting them to increase the capacity from just two kilowatt hours to around six kilowatt hours in an instant that's not a question but yes that's possible i have two so all in all four in total and the max with this system is six kilowatt hours. Another one, after seeing your video, I am thinking that this Delta Max has a lot of potential and it can even be used as a home backup power source. Another statement and for sure, I, I think so too. Well, I'm actually using it just for this use case. Very nice review of the Delta Max. Since it can be charged through solar panels, I think this would be great for an eco-friendly farm. Lesser pollution for the environment, time to go green. Yeah, definitely. If you only need six kilowatt hours of capacity, well, it's, I think this is lower mid range of when it gets to capacity. As I said, for example, my dad has 70 kilowatt hours of capacity and with that he can power his house for three days in total. So for a farm, you, you will probably need more than that. But if it's just a small farm or just a greenhouse, for sure. That was an extremely easy vlog to follow. You didn't try to baffle us with science. It was a little confusing when you went to your main battery room. A lot of 18650 batteries in several banks. Was that just a Tesla battery with the covers off? So the first question, that was not my battery room. It was, that's at my dad's place in his basement. And the, there were two Tesla battery packs on top as well. But the bulk of the batteries, they are from used laptop batteries. Usually there are like six to eight to maybe 10 18650 cells in a laptop battery and I actually recycled most of these batteries. There are a few vlogs. I will listen link a few vlogs in the description. This was like four years ago and I, I think it was like 1000 or 2000 of these 18650 batteries that I pulled out of these laptop batteries and resoldered to the packs. So no, these are not Tesla packs. There are two Tesla packs and the rest are second life 18650 cells from laptop batteries mostly. I think this is the fastest charging power station that can fully recharge in less than two hours. That is even faster than my phone charger. Yeah, it is crazy fast, although I would not recommend to go balls to the walls when it gets to the fast charging because this is of course a massive strain on the battery. So if you have the time, then go slow. I usually go for 400 watts for one and 800 watts when I use two. So that means 1200 watts for three. But it's of course amazing that it has the capabilities to do it. It's 
crazy fast. I just got one for emergencies for the refrigerator. The instructions say only store it at 30%. Well, what's the point of that if you need to be ready for an emergency? Someone on Amazon said they want you to store it at 30% so that it won't explode. What? What do you think? Is it best to store it for emergencies at 30%? As I said, I store mine at around 50%. They definitely won't explode, so that is complete BS. You can also store them at 100% and they, they won't explode. Don't believe every stupid review on Amazon. But it of course will degrade the system faster, the batteries. When you store them at zero or at 100, well, when you store them at the extremes, this is bad. So just remember, the closer you are at the extremes, the worse it is for the system, for the batteries, they will chemically degrade. So if you store it between like 30 to 70%, all of that should be rather fine. But of course, if you do not have solar panels, then this won't make a lot of sense. This won't make uh, this, yeah, it makes no sense. So if you want to store it in a safe capacity range, then you definitely need also need to have solar panels so that in case of an emergency, well, you can't charge them. You need the solar panels to charge them. And this is the way I do it. So I hope this helped. And yeah, that was the last question. So all in all, this is an amazing power station with amazing features and also amazing specs. Actually, mind-blowing specs, especially if you compare it to the competition. With fan curves and an API, this would be perfect. Perfect. Please get it done, EcoFlow. This would be so amazing. Check the product links in the description if you're interested. I will list and link the best deals for you. And before you go, smash that like button, then subscribe, ring the bell and click all to never miss amazing tech magnet videos. That's it for this one. Enjoy your day and I will see you soon.